For phonics practice today, we are reading the book My Big Wig. And in today's class, we are practicing the ending sound Ig, 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 I, G. Let's go. As always, I'll read first and you listen, and then you read on your own after. Are you ready? I like to dress up. I have a wig. My wig is big. I like my wig. Your turn, go. Nice work. That was hard. I have fun with my big wig. I can dig. You try. Go. Good job. Oh no. The wind took my wig. You try. Go. Good job! Away goes my big wig! Go! Nice! My big wig lands on a twig! You try, go! Nice work! I try to grab my big wig. It is stuck on the twig. You try, go. Nice work. The wind blows. It blows my wig from the twig away goes my big wig. You try, go. Good job! This is a hard one. My big wig lands on a pig. Oh pig, you look silly in my big wig. You try, go. Good job, that was hard. I take my big wig off the pig. You try, go. Good job! And the final page. I am happy. I dance a jig. I have fun with my big wig. Your turn, go. Nice work! In today's class, we learned all the words with the ending sound Ig, 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 I-G. And now I'll give you a challenge. How many of these words rhyme with big? Again, rhyming words means words with the same ending sound. Are you ready? The first word is car. Does car rhyme with big? Good, it doesn't because car's ending sound is ah, ah, ah. Good job. The second word is Sprig. Does sprig rhyme with pig? What do you think? Good, it does rhyme because sprig has ending sound ig, just like pig. Number three, we have a fig, yummy fig. Does fig rhyme with dig? What do you think? Good, fig has ending sound ig, just like dig. And finally, number four, we have book. Does book rhyme with twig? What do you think?
good. It doesn't rhyme because book has ending sound. Ook. Nice work. Now it's your turn. How many words can you think of with the ending sound ig ig ig? Let me know down below and try to write all of them that you can think of. Take some time to think about it and when you're ready, I'll see you in the next lesson for some more learning fun. That's all for now. I'll see you next time. Bye bye. For Comic Book Tuesday today, we are still hanging out with our good friends Benny and Penny, and today we are reading Just Pretend. Let's go. Benny and Penny in Just Pretend. Um, Benny? Where are you? Penny cannot find Benny. Benny? Where is Benny? Yo ho ho, hand over the gold. Here he is. I'm brave Benny the Penny. Benny! Play with me, bump. Go away, Penny. I'm a pirate. I can play pirate too. No. Pirates are brave, and you are a crybaby. Hey, get off my ship! It's a box! It's a pirate ship! No, it's a box! It's pretend! Thump! Whoa! Bump! Plop! Ouch! Listen, Penny, no means no. Give me a hug. Pirates don't hug. You don't know anything. Little pest. Huggy? Mom, I think it's Penny's nap time. No, it's not. No, mommy, no. Huh? Benny? 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 Benny! This can be my pirate cave. Penny will be too scared to look in here. Eek! Zoom! I'll hide under this hat. Benny? Is that you? No, I'm just a poor old man. Let's play! Hey, go away! You are a dumb bad little sister. Where? Benny, what did you do to Penny? Nothing. Sniff, sniff. Be nice and play with your sister. Yes, mommy. I know. We can play hide and seek. Yes, hide and seek. Hide in this box and I'll try to find you. But Benny does not look for Penny. Yo ho ho, I am brave Benny the pirate. That's funny. Penny is not calling me. Maybe she fell asleep. Or maybe she's hurt. Penny, hey, she's gone. Huh? Hmm, that's funny. Penny, 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 Penny. I see you, Penny. You can't fool me. Hi. Whoa. Oh, let her hide. I don't care. Now I can play by myself. I guess. Oh, he's looking bored. Benny, you found me. But how? I, but I looked in there. It was empty. I had to go pee pee. This time, we both hide. In there? But what if we get lost? Don't worry, we won't. Eek. Bug. Shoo, bug. Shoo. Wow, Penny, you are brave. Let's hide here. Uh, Penny, before, when I called you a dumb bad little sister, well, that was just pretend. I know. Huggy? Huggy. And where are Benny and Penny now? Here they are. Yo ho ho! The end. Wow, Benny and Penny sure are goofy, but now it's your turn. Share with me down below. What do you think about the story and what was your favorite part? Take some time to think about it and when you're ready, I'll see you in the next lesson for some more learning fun. That's all for now. I'll see you next time. Bye bye. For social studies today, we are going to France, home of the Eiffel Tower, baguettes and high fashion. Let's go. Chapter 1. Welcome to France. Go to the top of the Eiffel Tower, take a cruise down the river Seine, eat tasty food. Welcome to France. France has a rich history. It is filled with beautiful monuments. This right here is the Arc de Triomphe which is in Paris and it took 30 years to build. 
Paris is the capital of France. The president appoints the prime minister and they share the government duties. A council of ministers advises them. The Louvre, which is right here, is a museum in Paris. It is home to famous masterpieces such as the Mona Lisa, like this. Versailles, which is here, is a beautiful palace. The monarchy once lived here. King Louis XIV built it, when? More than 335 years ago. This palace has 2,300 rooms. One of these rooms is the Hall of Mirrors, which has 357 mirrors in it. The ceiling, as you can see, is covered in paintings. How many? 30 of them, and they depict the life of the king. Summers here are warm. It can be cold and rainy in winter, but in the south, winters are mild. Beautiful beaches like this line the southern border. This is the French Riviera. Nearby is Corsica, which is an island that is part of the country. It is covered with mountains and forests. What do you think? Many animals live in France's mountains. Like what? There's the ibex and the marmot. What animals live in the wild near you? Let me know down below. Chapter 2. Meals and Celebrations Christmas, Easter, Lemons Each is celebrated here in France. The town of Menton hosts a lemon festival each year. People create statues, they build parade floats. What are they made of? Lemons and oranges, like this. And then there's July 14th, which is Bastille Day. It marks the day that the French people claim their independence from the king. People enjoy parades, fireworks and festivals. Breakfast in France is a simple meal. It might be toast and jam or cereal. Ham and cheese on a baguette is a lunch favourite. Pastries are special treats and macarons are colourful cookies like those ones up there. They have sweet fillings. A chocolate filled croissant is a good snack. Yummy! Chapter 3. France's People Workers in factories here make clothing, cars, aircrafts and electronics too. Many people also have service jobs. They may work at hotels, restaurants or historic sites. Farmers here grow grapes. They produce milk, butter, cheese and wheat. The area of province is known for its lavender fields like this. Lavender is used in body products. People can cook with it too. Many children in France go to preschool when they are 3 years old. Everyone else begins by age 6. Some schools close early on Wednesdays and children use their time to play sports or practice music and they may catch up on their homework too. What do you think? After middle school, students have two choices. They can go to a high school to prepare for college or they can go to a trade school where they learn to do a specific job. What choice would you make and why? Let me know down below. The favourite sport is soccer. Here it is called le football. Many people play tennis too. Skiers head for the Alps. The Tour de France is a bike race. Bikers zip through the country every summer. There is so much to experience in France. What would you like to do here? Let me know down below. And now let's go through some new words we learned in today's book. The first word is capital, which is a city where government leaders meet. Courses are parts of meals served by themselves. Cours des oeuvres are various savoury foods served before a meal, like an entree. Independence is freedom from a controlling authority. Masterpieces are extremely good pieces of work, especially in the areas of art, literature or music. Monarchy is a government in which the head of state is a king or queen. Monuments are statues, buildings or other structures that remind people of events or people. A palace is a large fancy home for a ruler. Prime Minister is the leader of a country. Service jobs are jobs and work that provide services for others, such as hotel, restaurant and retail positions. And finally, trade school is a school at which one learns a particular trade or craft, especially one that requires working with the hands or with machines. Now it's your turn. What do you think about France? Share with me down below. And also, tell me some interesting things you learned about France today and what are some things you'd like to do if you visit one day. Take some time to think about it and when you're ready, I'll see you in the next lesson for some more learning fun. That's all for now. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.
for Animal World this month, we are learning all about the safari animals. Today, we are beginning with the gazelles, one of the most elegant and graceful animals in the world. Let's go! Gazelles are mammals with long necks and long legs. Most gazelles have horns, like these long ones over there. Gazelles live in dry grasslands. They gather in groups called herds, like this. They graze on grasses, shoots and leaves, and they get water from the plants that they eat. Gazelles also stop at watering holes to drink water, like her right now. They must look and listen for predators when they drink water. They have to always be careful. They use their long legs to run from cheetahs, lions and leopards. Watch out! Sometimes gazelles even pronk as they run. This tells predators to stay away. Female gazelles give birth to fawns, which are baby gazelles. Mothers hide the newborn fawns in tall grasses. Fawns run with the herds just after two or three weeks. Keep up, fawn! Now let's go through some new words we learned in today's book. The first word is fawns, which are baby gazelles. Graze means to feed on plants and grasses. Herds are groups of gazelles that travel together. Mammals are warm-blooded animals that have bones and feed their young milk. Predators are animals that hunt other animals for food. Pronk means to jump up and down on stiff legs. Shoots are stems, flower buds or leaves that are just beginning to grow. And finally, watering holes are natural areas filled with water. Animals gather at watering holes to drink. Now it's your turn. What do you think about the gazelle? And what are some interesting things you learned in today's book? Let me know down below. Take some time to think about it. And when you're ready, I'll see you in the next lesson for some more learning fun. That's all for now. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. For Science and Art class today, we are continuing with My Healthy Habits series. And in today's class, we are learning how to look out for germs. Let's go! Have you ever cracked an egg while cooking? What happens when you're done? You wash your hands. We should always wash our hands before and after handling raw food. This helps stop the spreading of germs. Germs make us sick. Some live on hard surfaces. Others are found in fluids or in the air. How do you avoid getting sick? Let me know down below. Germs spread fast in bathrooms. They also live in kitchens and the trash cans. Some pets spread germs too. So do wild animals. Sick people can spread germs. Germs travel when we cough and sneeze. They also pass through body fluids. What do you do when you sneeze? Don't forget to cover your mouth. However, looking out for germs isn't enough. We also have to avoid them. Washing hands is a good start. Use soap and water. Scrub for at least 20 seconds. That's two rounds of the happy birthday song. Find out how to clean different spaces. Ask how adults disinfect them. Always follow directions when handling food and do the same when caring for pets. Is someone at school sneezing a lot like him? Don't touch what they touch. Wash your hands instead. Ask your doctor for more tips for staying well. Germs are all around us. Watching out for them will give you a healthy future. What are some of your healthy habits? Let me know down below. Now it's time to go through some new words we learned in today's book. The first word is avoid, which is to keep away from. Disinfect is to clean an area or object by destroying the germs living within it. Fluids are liquids with no fixed shape. Germs are tiny organisms that often cause disease. Raw means uncooked or undercooked. And finally, surfaces is the outside or outer layer of something. Now it's your turn. What do you think about this book? Let me know down below. And also share with me some ways that you look out for germs. Take some time to think about it. And when you're ready, I'll see you in the next lesson for some more learning fun. That's all for now. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.
for comprehension class today, we are reading Beauty and the Pea. Don't forget to stay to the end of the class where we have some questions to test your understanding. Are you ready? Let's go! A shopkeeper came to Pea Castle and helped himself to a feast. But little did he know that Pea Castle was owned by a beast. A wicked witch had cast a spell on the beast who was once a prince. He had hidden away in a pea castle and has been lonely ever since. The witch had said that a kiss and a pea could be used for their magical powers to turn the beast back into a prince by a princess who liked flowers. The shopkeeper slept at the castle, but as he left, he plucked a red rose. A booming voice said, how dare you? The shopkeeper looked around and froze. You've slept and ate in my castle, and now you've taken a rose from my door. If you want to escape, said the beast, tell me who that rose is for. For beauty, the shopkeeper said, shaking. Your daughter? asked the beast with a wink. He take all the roses, the red and the white, the yellow and also the pink. Give her all these, then bring her to stay with me for a while. The shopkeeper said he would do so, and the beast turned away with a smile. Perhaps, he thought, she's a princess, and the shopkeeper is really a king. As the beast walked around his garden, his aching heart started to sing. He made up her bed with a mattress, after putting a pea in its place. He laid a rose on her pillow, and hung up curtains of lace. Beauty stayed a week at Pea Castle, to the beast's complete delight. He asked if her mattress was comfy, and if she slept through the night. I'm sorry I have not, said Beauty, there's such a big lump in my bed. Then, the beast knew she was not just a girl, but a beautiful princess instead. He jumped up with joy and said, Beauty, I know I look ugly and smell, but please kiss me once on my head to cast off a witch's mean spell. Beauty did as he asked her, and a prince appeared from the beast. The very next day, they were married and served pea cake at the feast. Now let's do a quiz to test your understanding. Are you ready? Question 1. Who came to the castle at the beginning of the story? Was it the princess? The beast or the shopkeeper? What do you think? I'll give you a moment. The answer is C, the shopkeeper. Very good. Question 2. What could turn the beast back into a prince? Was it A, the witch? B, a kiss and a pea? Or C, flowers? What do you think? I'll give you a moment. The answer is B, a kiss and a pee. Very good. Question 3. Why did the shopkeeper freeze? Was it because he hurt himself on a thorn from the rose? Or B, he plucked a flower and heard a voice? Or C, he was turned into ice? What do you think? I'll give you a moment. The answer is B, he plucked a flower and heard a voice. Good job. Question 4. When did the beast know the girl was a princess? Was it A. When she slept comfortably the first night? Or B. After he placed a pea under her mattress and she didn't sleep well? Or was it C. After she kissed the beast? What do you think? I'll give you a moment. The answer is B. After he placed a pea under her mattress and she didn't sleep well. Good job. Now question 5, the final question, where did the story take place? Was it A at Pea Castle, B in the forest or C in the town? What do you think? I'll give you a moment. The answer is A at Pea Castle. Very good. Now it's your turn. How many questions did you get correct? If you got 5 out of 5, it means you got 100% and you're amazing. Good job. What do you think about Beauty and the Pea? Let me know down below. And also, share with me an important lesson that you learned in today's book. Take some time to think about it. And when you're ready, I'll see you in the next lesson for some more learning fun. That's all for now. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.